Peru is home to several ancient cultures. The Spanish Empire conquered the region in the 16th century and made Lima its capital. My name is Nicholas. I am a chef and a product developer. And the last four years, passionately, I wanted to create a raw superfood product by the name Nutri-Nugget. And this is the beauty of the raw chocolate. Nutri-Nugget, it's a true artisanal product made out of passion. And of course, we put hard work into it. In order for me to experience firsthand how these magnificent raw superfood products are being cultivated, I decided to go to Peru to develop great relationships with the farmers. Upon my arrival in Huancayo, which is the center of Peru, I met with Luis Castillo, who the last few years became a great friend as well as guide in Peru. Luis brought us in contact with Prom Peru to connect us with the farmers. Prom Peru is the agency of the Ministry of Foreign Trade and Tourism that is in charge of developing strategies to produce an integrated and attractive image of Peru. From Huancayo, we're heading towards Oxapampa. This is a part of the Pasco region, one of the 25 regions in Peru, which is approximately six hours drive through the mountains. Today, we're heading uh, to Oxapampa, where uh, Yacon grows in the high altitude near the uh, Andes mountain. And we're uh, heading there to explore this divine product that Peruvian land produces. Yacon is a tuber. It is a root base, it's like a sweet potato, and you can consume it as a syrup and the powder. It has many, many healthy benefits, such as hypoglycemic, excellent for diabetes type 1, type 2, excellent for digestion, great probiotic feeds the good bacteria, as well as weight control. The four traditional staples of Peruvian cuisine are quinoa, caniwa, variety of corn, variety of potatoes, and other tubers, and legumes. Increíble. The Peruvian people adapted to their harsh environment by creating the terrace farming. Terrace farming was developed over a thousand years ago by the Wari cultures of the South Central Andes. Built to make the most efficient use of shallow soils and to enable irrigation of the crops. Driving through the hills and mountains, it was very impressive to witness this firsthand. But high altitude has its drawbacks, like altitude sickness. Well, it's a part of the journey to experience, uh, you know, the high altitude and feeling uh, a little nauseated. Yeah. Finally, after so many hours of driving, we arrived safely in the beautiful town of Oxapampa. We met up with a Yacon farmer, Mr. Hernan. Hola, buenas tardes, señor Hernan. Mucho gusto conocerte. ¿Cómo estás? De igual manera. Sí. Bien, bien. Siete horas para te encontrar y buscar el ahorro de Yacon que yo busco. Pero quiero saber cuántos años tú cultivas el Yacon. Tres. Tres veces he cultivado. Este año he dejado de eso. Es orgánico la tierra. Es orgánico. Perfecto. So, ¿Qué necesitas para cultivar el, el yacón? El problema que tengo yo con la siembra de yacón es de que es la parte económica, porque el yacón se demora nueve meses, ocho meses, ¿no? Entonces tendría que co cobrar un poquito más por el yacón. 
Pero eso también se debe al precio, a las facilidades que le pueden dar a uno para dedicarse al diacón. ¿Qué me interesa? Me interesa una cosa buena. Como te dijo antes, quiero hacer una buena relación con agricultores directos para cultivar sano, el orgánico, con ético, para un producto prima calidad. Dime cómo podemos trabajar juntos. Si me prestan la ayuda de las primeras necesidades que tengo yo acá para cubrir ciertas cosas, si yo tuviera esa ayuda, que no es mucho, ¿no? Sí. es excelente. Que le den un precio justo sobre el producto y todo lo demás. No de una forma que yo quiera ganar harta plata, sino sí, sí. también comenzar con... ¿no? y asociarme a un, una cosa seria que a mí me beneficie y a ustedes también perfecto so, si tú eres serio yo soy muy serio así es y te da mi mano quiero una relación buena para hacemos un producto excelente ojalá no se pierda soy honesto <risa> soy canadiense verdadero the corruption and exploitation has penetrated so deeply and holds back the progress so the farmer has no help so I come along to build that mutual, beneficial relationship that is fair to the farmer. What a beautiful day, exhausting. And we're heading uh, towards Taraporo, it's another region to explore uh, cow fields, Sacha Inchi, and see uh, how the farmers are working, uh, how their needs are being served, and finally to discover more of this beautiful journey. Peru has 90 different microclimates, including 30 of the 32 world climates, making it one of the most diverse countries in the world in microclimates. The three main regions, coast, mountains, and Amazonian jungles, also contain the three main climates. We drove a few hours outside the city through the town of Huanhui and towards the Amazonian jungle where we met with the cacao farmers. We're facing a tropical rain. It is getting heavier and heavier and slippery because uh, the whole soil is made out of clay. So we have to be careful how to walk step by step. The cacao tree grow in a limited geographical zone of about 20 degrees to the north and south of the equator with a consistent temperature of 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. The Theobroma cacao tree originated in the tropical Antis foothills in the Amazonian rainforest. Mayans depicted cacao pots as food of the gods. Look here, the flowers. It takes about five years for the tree to bear fruit. Very few of the cacao flowers will produce a fruit since less than 10% of them are successfully pollinated. Cacao pods take approximately four to five months to grow and several weeks to ripen. Peru is the world's ninth largest cacao producer and the world's largest organic cacao producer. More than 50,000 Peruvians earn a living through the cultivation and production of cacao. 
Peru is renowned for having some of the best selection of cacao in the world and for having one of the most highly sought-after cacao, the white Criollo cacao bean only found in the region of Pura. This cacao pod is very ripe and we cut it like this. And then cacao bean, very aromatic, very intense and extremely healthy. Minerals, flavonoids, antioxidants, all the, uh, the, the vitamins, magnesium, potassium, all the properties. This is the pure cacao bean that has been protected by the placenta. And this placenta is extremely delicious, more delicious than honey. It's like the baby that is protected by mother's placenta in the womb. Mm. Amazingly delicious. When it's very ripe, the color is dark red, almost purple or brownish. So there you can tell the quality of the cacao bean, very aromatic. I can eat the whole pot here. What makes Peruvian cacao famous is the fermentation process of the cacao bean. After he collects the cacao, he cuts the pod and he empties all the beans by hand inside that bucket. The bucket takes approximately 30 kilos and when it's fermented, it's only seven kilos net. That is taking another step of sun dry for another five days and it's ready to be transformed into cacao butter and mm -hmm. cacao powder or cacao liquor. In this bag, that's the way they receive them from the field. And then in these boxes, the second stage of fermentation where they preserve the aroma of the bean. Every day they mix, they turn, yeah. And then they put it in the other box and then this is the last day of fermentation here in this box. And the last day goes into the sun, all natural, organic, yeah, eight days. Wow. Wow, the aroma, it's very intense, very. Proper fermentation requires skill and knowledge in order to develop the fine chocolate flavors. Peruvians have become skilled in creating what is considered worldwide premium quality product. As we see here, the last stage of sun dry, this, uh, this stage is gonna stay approximately seven days. And after that, the processing plant, they select it and they, uh, they process the cacao butter and cacao liquor. Wow. <laughs> Extremely delicious. Now we see this is the cacao beans dried. It's a ready stock to be delivered to the processing plant and this it is approximately 8,000 kilos. But before they go into the bag, they pass it through this screen here and they take out all the small particles as you can see, like uh, stones or dry bean. Farmers put their hard work and passion and going through all the challenges. Te felicito mucho. Que trabajas de muy, muy, muy duro para hacer un producto excelente. Mucho gusto. Esto señor hace la procesamiento de, 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 de fermentación. Sí. Emilio es responsable que trabaja muy duro por poco dinero para los cooperativos. The Mayo Chinchipe people were cultivating cacao as long as 5,300 years ago. Chocolate was introduced to Europe by the Spaniards and became a popular beverage by the 17th century. Cacao orgánico sí. cuesta un poquito más porque hay este, productores que meten químico. Sí, sí, yo sé. Eso casi no vale. No vale. No vale ese cacao. Y a veces cuando tienes bastante área, te falta la economía. Sé, ustedes también podrían darnos un empréstamo. Se le paga con, con la producción lo que hay. Sí, sí. Porque a veces el cacao se necesita bastante gente para podarlo, cuidarlo, para mantenerlo bonito. 
Porque si, si es orgánico, tienes que cultivarlo puro chaleadora nomás. Sí, sí. Nada de veneno. The lack of support and resources is really having a profound impact on their crops. Aquí las dos cosas deben ir de la mano. El apoyo técnico con el apoyo crediticio. Mm. Muchas plagas vienen porque no se hace la poda respectiva. Mm. O sea, el exceso de sombra hace que el hongo viva, viva en esa sombra. Entonces lo que se necesitaría la presencia del Estado es con la presencia de profesionales. No es porque van a venir ellos a hacer, sino a que nos enseñen, nos ilustren qué debemos hacer para que esa plaga no siga amenazando la producción de cacao. Entonces debe de haber un, un apoyo financiero. Esto quiero saber porque nosotros hacemos una exploración aquí en, en Perú, a diferentes lugares de Perú, mm -hmm. para ver, para conocer claro. su necesidad, su, conocer su, su realidad. Unfortunately, lack of financial support makes it hard for farmers who grow organic crops to get rid of pests. Here, the larva of the cacao pod boar, which is a moth, feeds on the cacao seeds and ruins the fruit. The economic impact of this pest on cacao farmers is enormous. Still in the St. Martin region, we headed up to the high altitude where Satsa Inti is produced in the remote Amazonian jungles. To learn more about Satsa Inti and the challenges these farmers are also facing growing organic method. The rugged dirt roads made the last part of the drive extremely difficult. The fields are so remote in the heart of the jungle that you can only make it by foot. We had to walk approximately an hour to make it to the Satsa Inchi fields. This trail that we're walking through, the workers from the Satsa Inchi field, they carry 50 kilos with a rope on their shoulders. They bring value to every product we produce. We have to show some compassion and understanding, not only to what they produce, to the people. And this is called fair trade. Up and down, up and down. After a long and challenging walk deep into the jungle, we finally made it to the certified organic Satsa Inchi farm. Satsa Inchi is a fruit looks like a star planted by ancient pre-Inca cultures three to 5,000 years ago. And what is consumed is the seed inside. This is the beauty of Satsa Inchi. After five to six months, it dries and gives us that shape of a star, where inside the star, there are all the seeds that we consume as a raw superfood. Satsa Inchi has excellent source of protein, omega-9, omega-3, omega-6, omega-12, great source of nutrients. Inside the skin, there is this beautiful white that is ready to be consumed. Wow, very interesting taste. Esta es la producción, ¿verdad? ¿Cuántos hectáreas? Un poco más de media hectárea. Qué bueno. ¿Qué aquí qué tú cultivas? Sí, está en Sachainchi. Sachainchi. Es la producción mejor que se puede encontrar sí, en la agricultura. Sí, calidad. Que aquí qué lo he visto. Manejo fisiológico. Sí, sí, son manejos. Primero vienen unos ingenieros a. Ingenieros a, técnico, a, sí, técnicos. 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 Cada dato. So, esto es orgánico. Orgánico, sí, sí. Todo, sí, todo. todo el, el suelo está bien. El suelo sí está bien, sí. Here we experience the same problem, whether it's Sacha Inchi, whether it's a cacao or maca or anything. It is the same experiencing problem of difficulties and challenges that the farmers experience. Seeing the origins of these magnificent raw products was exhilarating, truly was breathtaking away. But I also learned that behind their growing global reputation, there is a tremendous hardship long and excruciating labor and often exploitation, corruption and injustice. More than ever, we need to exercise awareness of where our food comes from, how it's cultivated and who is involved. 
We owe it to our beautiful Mother Nature and to those who have for generations helped to produce nature's gifts to humans. It is not going to be easy, but this is a journey which I have chosen. It is my mission to which I'm wholeheartedly committed. The journey continues, the discovery unfolds.